Hello Diablo Gamers, Madskill here. While the most popular Necromancer class this season is Minions, I decided to try good old Bone Spear to see if it is still viable, and I think it is. Here is my build that I'm currently running. Obviously it is far from perfect because I don't have perfect rolls, not all gear has sockets, and not all gems are maxed here. All gear is also purposely at zero master working level to show that build has potential to grow to push further pit levels. Okay, let's review gear skills and paragon board. Deathless Visage is a great option for this build because every stat is useful and shards that it leaves behind can proc all your lucky hit affixes. Chest with all defense related rolls, nothing special here. Gloves with serration aspect. I have also tried Edgemaster here and it feels like serration is a bit better. Pants also have defensive affixes, but I want to try T-Bolts here once I find them. Boots with Metamorphosis. I really like to have that teleport in scary situations, and in future, it should help with T-Bolts to proc Unstoppable. Two-handed sword with grasping veins to have critical chance capped and extra damage to corpse tendrils targets. First ring with Torment. It feels way better than Exposed Flesh this season because of those essence per second stats on gear. Second ring is Sacrilegious, to automate corpse consumption. I have the worst possible rolls here, which holds me back as well. And lastly, amulet with splintering aspect to keep everything vulnerable. For the Book of the Dead, we sacrifice skirmishers, cold, and iron. But while leveling, you can choose to sacrifice defenders instead of skirmishers to boost all resistance until you have all paragon points and socket gems available. For the skill tree, pretty much what I used last season with some very minor changes. We take all passives in the core skill section, along with maxing bone spear, obviously. For corpse explosion, we use blighted to proc scourge glyph from paragon, but it is optional, and you have multiple glyph options that I will explain later in the video. Then, corpse consumption passives for essence generation and damage buff. In the curse section, we only take passive skills, but if you really like Decrepify, you can go for it. I just don't like it. Because of input lag I spend while casting it, I better spam Bone Spear instead. But it is a really good skill, especially later, when you need more damage reduction. Here Corpse Tendrils, of course, along with Serration, Compound Fracture, and Avulsion for great damage boost. In the ultimate section, we take Stand Alone, Memento Mori, Inspiring Leader Passives, and Bone Storm with just damage reduction upgrade because we are already capped at critical chance and don't need supreme upgrade. And lastly, of course, ossified essence. It will always give you damage boost all the way since you always will be increasing maximum essence with gear upgrades. Now let's review our Paragon board. I will focus only on important nodes and glyphs, and you can review more carefully in the planner. On starter board, we put sacrificial since we are not running minions, it also boosts magic nodes within range. For the second board, we use Bone Graft to boost damage and essence while hitting enemies, and the Entomb node for an extra 4% bone critical chance. We put Exploit Glyph here to increase vulnerable damage and damage buff while hitting vulnerable targets. Third board here is Scent of Death for either damage reduction or damage buff, depending on how many corpses we have nearby. I personally use Scourge Glyph on this board, but as I have mentioned earlier, you have multiple options here. If you are using Decrepify, you might want to use Amplify Glyph here. I have also tried to use Exhumation to generate Fortify, and with Fortify, you can enable several Fortify-related nodes on the board above here. But just 4% Fortify generation felt slow for me, so I opted out and am currently running Scourge with a Blighted Corpse Explosion. Next board is Flesh Eater for huge damage buff after consuming corpses. And Gravekeeper Glyph here for another damage boost for close corpses and to boost damage to Elite Rare Node as a small bonus boosting all Resistance Node as well. Okay, and lastly our final board is Bloodbath that we actually don't enable. We just use Glyph Socket here for Essence Glyph to boost critical strike damage. Well, we are done with Build Overview. Let's now check out my footage of Nightmare Dungeon Level 100 Run and my first ever try of Pit Tier 60. Enjoy, and thank you for watching.
out of potions. <laughs> I'm not ready yet. <laughs> 